Hi folks, this is Don Meisner with the North Country Fishing Report. I have to tell you, and I've told you stories before about the blue heron. And we're fortunate that we have these birds along our waterways and we can we can watch them fly high up. They look almost like an eagle, eagle until you can see their long neck and how it's stretched out. Well, when they fish, they fish in a certain way or they're hunting or whatever. And the other night when I was fishing and, and I thought to myself, I had fished an area and I'd really had good luck, but I'd had good luck because I stayed in that same area. I fished as slowly as I could. Why was I fishing slowly? It wasn't because I was lazy or tired or anything else. It's because I feel if I if I fish very slowly, I can I can sort of experiment with different types of presentation. I can I can throw that lure upstream, I can throw it across stream or even downstream. And the difference of that presentation might make a difference of whether the fish hits or not. I already feel the fish are in that pool. I know they're in that pool. So now I have to find a way to make them strike. And so I fish very slowly. I also fish very slowly because I feel because they can see things and hear things coming into their environment from quite a distance that if I just barge in the water, I'm going to scare them off. I'm not, it takes away my chance of catching fish. So getting back to the blue heron, I had been in this pool for about an hour, hadn't moved a lot. And I decided it was time for me to start walking back towards my car, which was, you know, quarter of a mile, half mile away. So I knew I had a long walk. And so I began my walk back, and I, I, I'm right near the shoreline because it's shallower. It's easier for me to walk. And I happened to glance to my side, and not 10 feet away was a blue heron. And it was like a bird dog on point. I stopped, and I looked, and he was on flat rock. He wasn't even in the water. He was on the flat rock that was along the shoreline. And his head was down. It was cocked in a certain way, and he was intently either ready to strike or whatever they do. But obviously, he wasn't ready to eat a fish. There must have been a frog or something that was in a crevice on that rock or something that he was about to to get. And it made me realize a lot of their diet may be a lot more than fish that they're getting, maybe frogs and other crustaceans or whatever that they're getting along the, the shoreline where you see blue herons. You never see them out in the water. It's not their nature. What interested me is why... He had not taken off with me so near. And why now with me walking back, he started to walk. He he, he got off his point. He decided, mm, he's moving now. What am I going to do? I'm, I'm thinking in terms of his mind. And he started walking back in the same direction. And we're 10 yards apart, walking at the same speed, going back. And I'm thinking, when is he going to take off? When is he going to fly? And I got to the end of a certain stretch. Maybe we'd walk 20 feet, 30 feet down He turned his back and started walking back where he was. I guess he was thinking about that frog he wanted to go back and try to get. But but what fascinated me is how he came through that hour I was fishing maybe to realize, okay, I'm part of the environment with him. I wasn't a threat. I wasn't doing anything that was going to change his fishing or hunting or whatever he was doing. I don't know, but it fascinated me. And I wanted to share that with you because I think it's a reflection of how, especially if we're alone, if we're fishing alone, it's a whole different experience than if we're fishing with somebody else. Our conversation is within our brains. We're not moving the same. And while there's tremendous rewards with fishing with somebody else and enjoying the camaraderie, when you're alone, it's a different experience. And with my technique which is very successful for me, it it seems to allow other things to accept me. And hopefully the fish around me are kind of doing the same thing. They're finally realizing, hey, whatever that is standing there isn't moving much, isn't really a threat. So maybe we can start feeding closer to him or whatever. Obviously they don't know I'm a guy, but it, it, the the lesson in this is something that I'm always trying to learn, new lessons of how not only to be a better fisherman, but to enjoy when I'm out there fishing. Until next time, folks, this is Don Meisner with the North Country Fishing Report.